Hi, I'm Amir. And I'm Jay. And today we are going to review the Netgear AC Center Pure Range Extender. Firstly, let us travel to the Heinz Hall to check out our setup. Our setup mainly consists of a Netgear Nighthawk AC 1900 dual band access point, a 2x2 two two Netgear AC 750 range extender, a MacBook Pro which acts as a client, an Asus laptop which acts as a server, iX chariot to measure throughput and a Wi-Fi DBX device. The testing was carried out on the second floor of the Heinz Hall. The distance from the access point to the range extender is 120 feet. The MacBook Pro is connected to the range extender whereas the Asus laptop is connected to the access point over a wire. This is the setup of the range extender in the hallway on the second floor of the Heinz Hall. We used Channelizer Pro along with Wi-Fi DBX to carry out the survey of the channel having the least interference. We got channel 6 on 2.4 GHz and channel 40 on 5 GHz to be having the least amount of interference. The range extender uses the same channels as the access point to communicate over backhaul. So now we'll set up our Netgear range extender to work with our existing Netgear access point. We will first choose the smart setup option and choose in the range extender mode. This is the list of access points which the range extender can receive in the existing environment. We will choose our desired access point and enter the credentials to connect to it. After that, we'll get a confirmation page stating the range extender is connected to the access point. Now we will explore more functionalities of the Netgear EX3700 range extender. In settings, we have these options. In the wireless setting menu, you can enable, disable different Wi-Fi bands and choose to connect the wired to 2.4 or 5 GHz frequency band. You also choose to broadcast or hide your SSID as well. Further, you are given an option to provide IP addresses to clients by the range extender or via the AP itself. We are going to opt to allow the AP to assign IP addresses to clients. Also, you have an option of WPS setup as well. Next, we can see the connected devices to the range extender. This list is split between wired and wireless devices. You can view the IP address, MAC address and device name as well in this list. Next, we have the password option which allows us to change the password and also give us an option to select security question in case we forget the password. This is a pretty handy feature. In the other option, we can backup, restore our settings. Next, we'll go into the do more option. Here, the access schedule feature allows us to permit or deny access to wireless clients depending on certain criteria. These criteria can include specific days, specific time on those days. Most small enterprise environment would intend to set the access time between 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. But this is variable, so you can choose according to your needs. Also, there's an option of choosing the time zone according to your geographic location. Next is one of the most important feature from our testing purpose. The fast lane features allow us to vary the backhaul communication and client access frequency between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band. In basic mode, the range extender will use 2.4 and 5 GHz frequency band to communicate with clients as well as with the access point. Using Fastlane features, we can choose to communicate with clients at 2.4 GHz frequency band and 5 GHz frequency band to communicate with the AP or we can choose the 5 GHz frequency band to communicate with client and 2.4 GHz frequency band to communicate with the A access point. This feature can allow us to restrict access from legacy devices. Also, this option will help to improve the channel utilization in a much more efficient manner. This is the iX chariot console. It is a software which is used to measure the throughput between end devices. We have installed endpoints in our MacBook Pro and the Asus laptop. We are going to add these endpoints in the iX chariots portal. The source is the Asus laptop and the destination is the MacBook Pro. The topology that we are using is round robin. We are going to add the flow group, which is the TCP high throughput performance test. This test measures the TCP throughput between the end clients. We are also going to simulate the YouTube traffic using the app mix. And we're going to simulate these two performance tests using 20 users. 
this is the throughput test from the 10 feet distance on MacBook Pro which is connected to the range extender so in order to test our device we have devised these four test scenario cases in test scenario 1 the range extender is connected to the AP using port 2.4 and 5 GHz frequency and the client is connected to 2.4 GHz SSID in test scenario 2 similar configuration is used only now the client is connected to 5 GHz SSID in test scenario 3, the range extender is set up to use 2.4 GHz as backhaul frequency and 5 GHz as client access frequency. And finally, in test scenario 4, the range extender is set up to use 5 GHz as backhaul frequency and 2.4 GHz as client access frequency. These are the test results we obtained from all the four test scenarios. So, as you can see, in test scenario 1, we got a pretty high TCP throughput but the YouTube throughput was comparatively low. When we connected the client to 5 GHz SSID, the TCP and the YouTube uh, traffic was almost identical. Using 2.4 GHz as backhaul and 5 GHz as access, we got also a similar kind of result. But the best result we got was when we used 5 GHz as a backhaul frequency and 2.4 GHz as client access frequency. So Amay, what are your views on this device and what would you recommend to someone looking to buy a range extender? Uh, yes Jay, I would definitely recommend this product to someone who is out there in the market to purchase a range extender. Implementing this device in an Soho environment with uh, 2.4 GHz as client access frequency and 5 GHz as a backhaul frequency definitely provides a high TCP throughput and a very good YouTube throughput as well as we saw in our test results. And for home users, I would definitely recommend them to implement this device in a uh, dual mode wherein the legacy devices can connect to 2.4 GHz frequency and the newer devices can connect to 5 GHz frequency channels. So using the available frequency very in a very efficient manner. Awesome. So if you're in the market looking for a small size affordable range extender with great functionalities and performance, this is one of your purchases. Thank you.